<sighs> Hello. You've caught me failing to earn a trophy, bouncing off an arbitrary task just to earn a tiny virtual cup. Oh, sitting on something as well. What is this? Oh, a ring. Isn't that, isn't that odd now? Yet after all, why not? Why shouldn't I rub it? Who the heck are you? I'm Plat... <clears throat> Sorry, I'm Platman. I don't know who that is. Fear not, I have an intro sequence. From dullest bronze to shiny gold, no trophy shall escape his hold. If you're stuck and want to fold, just call Platman. No game's too old. So, what seems to be the problem? Oh. Uh, well, it's Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, I've been stuck on this impossible trophy called Leave No One Behind. And I really uh, just... Uh, impossible? But that's a bronze trophy. You used the summoning ring on a bronze trophy. Alfred, send the Platmobile. It's another time waster with a bronze. This is not the first time I've butted heads with a bronze trophy that's too tricky to be a bronze trophy. Game designers have been pulling these shenanigans for decades. I literally did this same list back in 2016. But they persist, awarding the tiniest pat on the back when you're looking for the full-bodied Heimlich manoeuvre of praise. It's a gold star for effort. Except it's not. It's bronze. A bronze trophy should be for mastering the basics, not going above and beyond, certainly not requiring hundreds of hours of grinding to tick off or pulling off a feat of muscle memory honed through weeks of study. These days, you get bronze trophies for petting dogs and trying on a hat. So bear that in mind as we consider seven brutally difficult bronze trophies that could easily be gold. Before Platman rudely interrupted, I was going to tell you about an epic trek across Faerun in Baldur's Gate 3. That's two lists in a row now for Baldur's Gate 3. Dave? The trophy is Leave No One Behind and is yours for saving every tiefling refugee you can in a single playthrough. Doesn't sound bad, until I describe the two key qualities of tieflings, that they've got horns and like to be killed by everything they meet. They make lemmings look like Nathan Drake. In just the opening area of Act 1, this tiefling can be assassinated, this one can be bitten by a snake, these ones have to be talked out of fleeing to their doom, and when harpies see this child tiefling, they go to work on him like seagulls with a bag of chips. Somehow, avoid all these deaths and you've still got to get an entire goblin army off their backs. And this is Act 1 of 3. Honestly, being a tiefling defender is essentially an entire play style. You'll spend the next 100 hours protecting tieflings in battle or passing skill checks to talk them out of self-harm, all while making the overarching decisions that mean you're in the right time or place to actually keep them alive. That's 100 hours of hoping, praying, that you've not missed one. Only finding out when you get to the end credits that... No. How is this a bronze? Next up, a classic example of the form, a GTA Vice City trophy called Keepy Uppy Okie Dokie. It's a bronze with ideas above its station that requires you to score five in Vice City's hidden Keepy Uppy minigame. In real life, it's not a problem. I am practically a keepy uppy master. The ball essentially magnetised to my skull in an effortless display of grace and elegance. In the game, not so much. The lightest touch sends the ball flying faster than a pedestrian off a Vice City taxi bumper. And Tommy Vassetti's knobbly head... I wouldn't say it to his face. 
makes it pure luck whether the ball goes neatly up and down or shoots off into a neighbouring state. It's not his fault Tommy Vassetti wasn't built with athletic grace in mind. If there was a trophy for bouncing a hammer off someone's skull five times, he'd absolutely walk it. Well, probably run it because of the whole police thing. It's a classic case of a bronze trophy asking you to do something you'd never normally do, even if you can do it perfectly in real life. Rob, why is there a CG budget for this week's Friday feature? Bronze trophy number three is Twin Dragon Destruction from Spyro Year of the Dragon. Not the most obvious contender for a tear your hair out nightmare, figuratively speaking but one of those thorn-in-the-paw irritations that stops you in your tracks. You're given one small dragon with which to bring down two big dragons in the fireworks factory. As paired bosses go, this is hardly Ornstein and Smuff, but they still manage to tick a number of difficult boss no-nos. Random feeling movement, so you're constantly second-guessing where they'll go. Check. Slightly too fast speed, preventing you from keeping on their tails. Oh yes. Regenerating health bars, so every tiny mistake sets your progress back. Actually, they're much worse than Ornstein and Smuff. I swear I did this fight on PS1, back when you could defeat a boss and everyone would have to take your word for it. Or you just conveniently lost the memory card with any proof of your failure. In 2024, where trophies announce your ability to anyone who cares, twin dragons are beyond me. These guys have either gotten faster, or I've gotten slower. It's probably them, right? Uh... Ah, Deathloop. A game about a man stuck in an endless time loop where he fruitlessly ticks items off a list. Sounds familiar. Perhaps he should learn from Wenji Evans, a scientist who summons other Wengies from alternate timelines to aid her in everyday chores. Don't roll your eyes. How do you think I write Friday features every week? <laughs> we should do a bit where we get Alex to wear a rubbish superhero costume. Yes, <laughs> nice one, Robtimus Prime. Cheeky Dr. Peppers, anyone? What's good for Wenji's productivity is bad for my trophy hunting. Quantum Solution requires you to kill all Wenjis in 90 seconds. That's 17 Wenjis in a minute and a half, or one Wenji every five seconds. Yes, I've read the strategies. Use magics to link Wenji to Wenji and kill two Wenjis at once. Trip Wenji's lab defences to depressurise the room and suffocate the Wenjis. Draw the Wenjis outside with gunfire to kill Wenjis as they investigate. Or just learn the position of every Wenji, don't alert a Wenji, and sprint between them one Wenji at a time. That's easier said than done. Literally, I just said Wenji 17 times. That was 17. In under 90 seconds. And no trophy pop. That should be a gold. It is criminal. Entry number five is Destroyer of Demons from Neo, a bronze trophy for completing every mission on Way of the Demon difficulty, which, as the name suggests, is a gauntlet burped from the belly of hell. You're probably thinking, but Rob, why single out this bronze? Every bronze in Neo is difficult. And that's true, the most common trophy for Neo for beating the first mission has only been earned by 60% of William Adams's. So what hope is there for my William Adams? Next along is a trophy for taking a bath and that's only pinged for 40% of players. My question, what the heck happened to 20% of people between finishing the first mission and trying to take a bath? You slipped on the soap or something? But no, destroyer of demons it is. It means tackling every level, this time flooded with glowing red demons. And that glows not the warm, happy flush of ready breck. Oh no, it is the red hot fury of a monster out to do everything in his power to stop you from getting a trophy. Worst of all, it's part of the first DLC pack, so it doesn't even count towards the platinum. It makes me sick. That's my 18th death in Resident Evil 2's fourth survivor mode. That time I made it, let's see, about ooh, 13 metres. 
And 13 metres won't cut it. If you want Resident Evil 2's Grim Reaper trophy, you need a complete run. That's guiding Hunk from the sewers to the front gates of the Raccoon City Police Department. Or so I've heard. I've only ever made it up to the police station twice. These aren't the corridors you mastered to finish the campaign and unlock fourth survivor to begin with. Once familiar ground now swarms with the undead. Getting past this lot is like running to catch the last train home on New Year's Eve, with all the drunks suddenly lurching into you. <laughs> I can kind of see the bronze thinking, you know, done right, this only takes nine minutes, but it's nine minutes of hell. Nine minutes I could spend doing things I love doing in nine minutes. Instead, I'm spending it failing to get a flipping bronze trophy and being turned to jam by the world's angriest fedora enthusiast. <laughs> Ah, uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, a game that sliced through my free time like a hot massa moonay through soft heroin, filled my head with the finest music on PS5, sent me down endless theorycraft rabbit holes and offered some of the cruelest bronze trophies around. We're talking end of chapter 14, cruel. If you know, you know. There's one for A-ranking all the piano tunes, which is like listening to a neighbour painfully learning to play the keyboard, only the neighbour is your own stupid hands. Or the trophy for beating all the Moogle Merchant minigames, a game that waddles towards you with a cute embrace only to shank you in the kidneys the second you let your guard down. The Mooglets make this dreadful fluffball look like a saint. Those trophies could easily have made this list, which tells you that the one I am choosing, Polygonal Prize Fighter, is a nasty piece of work. It's about climbing the ranks in the Gold Saucer's 3D boxing simulator, ducking and weaving your way up to an adorable chibi Sephiroth and thrashing him for the bronze. It's at this point that I'd describe how challenging it is to land the killing blow on 3D Brawler Sephiroth, but I can't because I'm still trying to unlock him. You see, before Sephiroth will step into the ring, you need to prove your mastery of every minigame at the Gold Saucer in a one-on-one -on -one contest with the Shinra middle manager. That means beating his score in G-Bike, outrunning his mecha chocobo, acing galaxy saviours, thrashing him at Queen's Blood, fighting five incredibly difficult waves of enemies in the Musclehead Coliseum. Ten Tombries, Shinra middle manager, ten? That's insane! and then beating the manager himself in 3D Brawler. Beat that lot and you get your shot at Sephiroth, knowing that you are the king of gold saucer, or bronze saucer, to give it its correct name. Now I've reminded myself of how far away the Rebirth Platinum is, I've got to go and sulk in my room. So why don't you take over and use the comments to share the bronze trophies that you feel ought to be a more precious metal. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to PlayStation Access for more lists like this every Friday. See you next week.